Hi, this is Tom Muir with World Class Coaching with another in our series of animated drills. Uh, this week I've already set up my planet training software to have the diagram already set completed because as you can tell, this is somewhat of a complicated pattern, but if you go through it one side at a time, then you'll see that it's really not that complicated. It's something that uh, you know many teams would be able to handle with no problem. I wouldn't suggest doing this with probably you know anybody below about U12. Uh, so I think it's appropriate for U12 and above. But we'll just go through it step by step and you'll see it's not that complicated. And it's a great 2v1 exercise with constant movement and constant thinking by the players. Now this is a, a Koji pattern that uh, I was introduced to when our club coaches went down to Florida and uh, observed some Koji training that was being done down there at a camp. And I did a previous video on this on the 1v1 activity with a very similar shape. So if you haven't seen that activity and you haven't done that activity with your team, I suggest you start with the 1v1 and then build up to the point where they can understand the complexity that we have here. So what we've got is we have a setup where the cones on the outside here are, and again, I always say this can vary depending on the age and ability of your players. The way I set this up is I have these cones 10 yards away from the middle flag, and then we'll have these goals 10 yards away from that middle flag as well. So it's all set up you know, in basically a, a large 20 yard circle. And so we have an equal number of players if possible on each side. Uh, if I needed to have an odd number, I would have extra players on the sides here just so that we're, we're prepared on the outside. As you can tell, the players near the goal do not have a soccer ball. And then only the player at the front of the line near the cones doesn't have a soccer ball. They're all lined up so that their left hand is on the cone or their left hand is on the goal. So that's the important way that everything is set up so that all the players are in the same position relative to each other and, and we can work on this pattern. And if you've seen the Koji training, you know, you know why they all need to be on one side because we're gonna have this first run is gonna go out past the flag and turning left. You could do this entire activity on the other side. Uh, I would suggest doing it with their left hand on that side first for whatever reason and I can't explain the physiology you know, why it works this way or the way players process things but it seems like moving uh, from the left side here and turning left is much easier than going right uh, whenever I change this and flip it in the other direction and it very well could be just the act of changing it confuses the players uh, but it just seems like they always have much more difficulty going from that right side of the cone or right side of the goal so that's our setup then what we have is we have the first player in line, as I said, without a ball. The two players will come out together. Player one will go out past the flag, turning left. Player two will dribble out a shorter distance and now make a diagonal pass to player three. Player three is checked from one side of the goal here with their left hand on the goal. And they've checked all the way around to the other side to receive that pass coming in from player two. After player two makes that pass, they check wide and open up. Player one has made the run around the flag and now receives a pass from player three. And then player three circles back and checks around the other side. So we're creating movement to receive the pass rather than standing and receiving. It's not as realistic as having the players move. So we're moving and receiving the ball. So then the ball is laid back here to player one who plays it in to player three. Okay, and now player three has the ball and dribbles forward. As that happens, player one that was on this side switches and defends that side. Player one that was on this side switches and defends that side. So we now have a two versus one going toward this goal on this side of the field. We have the exact same thing happening, all the same movements, all the same patterns on the opposite side of the field. And so what we've done is we've created a lot of movement and a lot of opportunities for the players to think about what their next job is. And that's an important factor in Koji training. It's not passing and standing or dribbling and stopping and turning as much as it is always being aware of what your next option is and your next responsibility. Just like in the game, if you pass a ball and lose possession, your next job may be to defend. So the player that was here playing these, you know, give and goes, playing these double passes with player three, you know, has basically lost the ball and now they're turning this way to defend as they would, they turn to transition. So, you know, we've got a realistic movement then 
by player one. Player one checked around and, and supported that pass that was made into player three. So we have movement and support. We have player two dribbling, passing, and then opening up to create an opportunity to combine with player three. Obviously, player three is going to dribble out here and try to commit this defender. If they can commit this defender and then play player two into the space, then it's going to be relatively easy to score. If player one overplays the pass and tries to deny that passing opportunity, then player three can cut inside and try to score on that goal. When I'm playing this, I'll, I'll say that the game has to happen on your side of the field. So basically, the 2v1 has to happen between that flag and that cone. That's your area. If the ball goes outside of that area, you know, that, uh, that round is over, and we go on to the next to the next round. So it's a pretty easy rotation from there. The players just rotate to their left. So the player that started coming from this side and making that run and eventually ended up playing 1v1 over there will end up coming down here to join player three line. Player three will end up joining this line over here as this player three will end up joining this line. So everybody's changed lines. The only exception to that is player two who was the wall passer in this scenario, will now just jump in front and become player one, basically. They'll become the player without the ball. So that way we've got players behind that line and behind that first player that have a ball and they're ready to go. When a player is done being the wall passer, they just go right back to the line they were in and then they complete that pattern as the first player in line. So now they're going to make that player one run, the passes involved, and the defending involved. And so then they're going to rotate. So we've got the players rotating around the area. So they're performing all of the different actions and the different attacking and defending responsibilities in a pattern that they have to think about. And again, you know, being Koji training, it's a real focus on having the players think and not move in linear patterns, but with angles and movement and timing that they have to figure out. And at the very first few times that you do this, you'll have players going in the wrong direction. You'll have players forgetting where they were supposed to go at all. You'll have players forgetting to turn and defend the other side. They'll stop and try to defend this side. All of that is part of the process. Don't be frustrated by that. Don't, you know, don't get angry with the players because of that. It's part of the learning process. They need to mess it up before they can figure it out. As they figure it out, then it becomes smoother and they start to think about things uh, in terms of where to go next. And so they begin to not just concentrating on the moment that they're in, but also planning ahead and anticipating that next movement so they know what their next responsibility is, which is so important in the game. So, you know, I really think that a lot of times you can have complicated exercises that are complicated just for the sake of being complicated. Whereas I think this 2v1 activity is complicated with a purpose. It's complicated, but it also teaches thinking about the next thing. It teaches the movement, the angles, the timing that we're trying to work on. And I think it's a, it's a really good vehicle for training 2v1 decision making as well. Because once, and, and that's kind of the way I approach it is, first I teach the pattern, then I teach the, the techniques basically. So once they understand the pattern, then they're going to get a lot of repetitions on decision making in 2v1 situations. The defender, if you want to focus on the defender as well, you can train the defender to how to deal with 2v1 situations and try to you know, have their best opportunity to win the ball. Incidentally, if the defender does win the ball, they're able to counterattack in the other goal, which I think is important when you're playing these kind of activities to have that counterattacking opportunity because it gives this defender uh, some reason to defend and some reward if they do well and win the ball. So uh, again, it's got to be limited to between the cone and the flag. So if the ball goes out of bounds, then the activity's over, that round is over. But until then, it's a live 2v1 with one team trying to score in the far goal, the defender trying to counterattack into this goal. So give this some time and some patience after doing the 1v1 activity that I showed before. And I think that you'll find the players get it given the time and given the instruction, and it'll really improve their 2v1 attacking as well.